gals and non-binary pals, this is Princess Chimera, and just so you know, you are magical in your own special way. First off, I want to say Happy Halloween! Next up on day 25 is the Musketeer. His name is Mun. <laughs> Can't even English to save my life sometimes. <laughs> he goes by Emmanuel, who is a Musketeer for Count Miguel Ramirez. Emma Emmanuel is a professionally trained swordsman and he takes his role very seriously, which makes him to be too stiff and aloof. And pretty much acts like he has a stick up his butt. But he makes up for it in loyalty to the Ramirez family. He really doesn't look all that steampunk because there's not enough brown into his character besides the hair, but I really am glad about the results that I came up with for him. If you guys have any better ways to make him look more steampunk, I'd love to hear it down in the comments. And maybe I can do a better drawing of him at some point in the future. If you guys like him the way he is, just let me know. But I do plan on making a remastered version of him one day. Moving on to day 26 is the magician, Marissa. She's been into magic as a child and her parents fully support her. 
And she ends up living in Las Vegas, which results in a friendly rivalry with Harry Silverstein as they love to one-up each other in magic, or in Harry's case, demonstrations. Even then, the both of them do charity work together. And it's actually kind of fun just to see them one-up each other, especially during charity events. Like, one minute, Marissa's making a teacup float up in the air above her head, which is seen here. And next thing you know, Harry is like going through a glass door with only a piece of paper and himself to go through it. I'm actually very interested on in how you guys think the two would meet. Put down your theories in the comments because I love hearing stories from you guys. For day 27, we have Brass, who is a dog for Rusty, Wings, Gears, and Smithy. They ended up finding her as an abandoned puppy near a dumpster, and they decided to take her in as their own. Since living with the guys, Brass has been described as cheerful and energetic, though she has a tendency to be a little bit reckless. My favorite part about drawing her is basically doing the fur, even though it's not the best that I've done, but I want her to be a very happy dog. Though I think it looks a bit more uncanny valley. I'm thinking of doing animals a bit better. I've never been good at drawing them, but I do want to do more of animals at some point. Even though I did it last year and it wasn't really that good, basically. <laughs> to day 28 which is the queen of darkness and that's all she's called by everyone only <laughs> meant to say that's all she's called as everybody only knows her by the name queen of darkness they call her that because she's cruel heartless and she is a master manipulator so don't be surprised if you were gaslit by her with all those negative traits. Two positives she has is that she's very detail oriented in war. Detail oriented while in war. And she can tell from emotions that seem humanly impossible. She's kind of similar to the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland, but unlike the Queen of Hearts, she's not quick to decapitate somebody. In fact, she prefers to injure or torture those who oppose her and let them live just so they can suffer. I actually stuttered right there for a moment because I couldn't think sometimes. Sometimes my brain works faster than my mouth. Can you guys relate to that? On to day 29, which is the Ripper. Some people say that they are an assassin working for the Queen of Darkness, though they prefer to go after their own targets. 
Try as they might, police couldn't find a clue to their identity, so no one knows who they are or if their identity will ever be revealed. There are like two rippers that I've taken reference to when creating this character, and that is... Actually, there are three. One is Jack the Ripper, the most infamous of them all. The Yorkshire Ripper, which is, I think, in ref which is the inspiration for Grell Set Sutcliffe in Black Butler. Trans Icon. And another reference, which is the Zodiac Killer, which nobody knows the identity of. Well, until recently, anyway. Have they really found the identity, or have they found Red Herring again? If you guys know, just put it down in the comments. Next up for day 30 is the remade man who we call Dante. He used to work for the Queen of Darkness because she used her tactics to brainwash him into thinking somebody had killed his father and mother. Knowing better now, he plans on writing those wrongs, however you say it. But he hates... He hates... <sighs> Tongue-tied again, and I hate that. As much as he wants to right those wrongs, he hates that he now has morals. The name, his name is actually a reference to Dante Bosco and the character's personality is pretty much in reference to Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender which Dante Bosco has voiced. I never actually got a chance to meet him at AWA which he was a guest appearance in, but maybe one day I'll be able to meet the guy. Hopefully, he'll like the art piece. Finally, for Halloween, October 31st, we have the Clockwork Girl. Her actual name is unknown, but not her origins. She was built after a, t a scientist's daughter, Daisy, tr tragically dying from tuberculosis or TB. He made a clockwork -like replica of his daughter, and it may be a sign of being in denial of for watching this video and for watching all of my Inktober videos. And if you like it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and, and type something awesome in the comments. If you want to join in on my comment, don't forget to, to hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching this video.
and I'll see you guys